Hi, this is Eric White. In this screencast, I am going to explore the markup for tables in spreadsheets. And in addition, I'm going to show you how you can write a bit of code to convert ordinary cells into tables. First thing I'm going to do is create a little spreadsheet. Let's put a bit of data in here. So we're going to make a little database of vehicles. So there's a Ford. It has 40,000 miles on it. And its cost is 3,500. There's a Chevy. It has 55,000 miles on it. And its cost is 4,200. And there's a Tata. And it's got... 51,000 and its cost is 3,800. I'm going to save that. I'm going to copy and paste it, rename it to test2. Now I'm going to convert these ordinary cells into a table. So I come over here, I say let's insert a table. Where is the data for your table? Dollar sign $A, dollar sign $1 through dollar sign C dollar sign four is correct and my table does indeed have headers. So we'll say OK. So now we've got an Excel table. We can save that and close it. The next thing to do is to compare those two Excel spreadsheets. I'm using the OpenXML SDK 2.0 productivity tool. This is part of the OpenXML SDK 2.0. Navigate to Public Documents, Open Test 1 for the first file, Open Test 2 for the second file. Let's take a look at some of the differences here. First of all, Core Properties has a difference that is not relevant to us. Let's look at the differences in Sheet 1. We can see that there's a difference in selection here, but that doesn't really matter to us. Let's go to the next difference. This table parts element does matter to us though. What this table parts element does is indicate that there is a table on this sheet. That is the only difference in the markup on this sheet. When you add a table, it adds this table parts element. Other than that, the rest of the markup for all of the cells is ordinary spreadsheet ML markup. We can see right here there is a new table 1 part and we can also see that there's a difference in styles. I'm going to open up the styles part and look at the difference. We can see that there is a new DXF child element in the DXFS element. Let's go to the OpenXML standard and take a look at that. I'm going to look for DXFS and we see DXFS is in section 18.8.15 so let's navigate there. There's section 18. Styles is section 8. DXFS is section 15. What we have learned from this element in the OpenXML standard is that this element contains formatting for non-cell formatting in this workbook. This is going to be relevant to other markup that we're going to see in a bit here. Let's minimize this. I'm now done looking at this file comparison. Next I want to close these in the OpenXML SDK productivity tool and I want to examine test2.xlsx in Visual Studio. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio I'm going to drag test2.xlsx and drop it onto Visual Studio. Here I'm using the power tool for Visual Studio that enables you to directly edit OpenXML documents and in fact any OPC document directly in Visual Studio. You can drag and drop an OPC document onto Visual Studio, expand the various parts in Visual Studio, look at the markup. What I'm interested in looking at now is looking at the relationships. What we can see here is now 
sheet1.xml has a relationship to tables slash table1.xml. This link icon here indicates that this is a relationship. If I look at this, I can see that this relationship has a relationship ID of rid1. Now, let's look at the markup in table 1. This is a part that was added when I converted those cells to a table. I'm going to format the markup in table1.xml. I'm going to I'm going to press control E, control D. I use the option in Visual Studio to align attributes when formatting. You can see that you here you go tools, options, text editor, XML, formatting and I turn on this option right here to align attributes each on a separate line. Now when looking at table1.xml we can see that the table column with an ID of 3 has an attribute data DX FID and the value of this attribute is 0. This is an index into this DXFS element here. That zero index refers to the one and only DXF element that is a child element of DXFS. The point about this is that formatting on a table in SpreadsheetML is not cell-based formatting. So formatting in a table refers to formats in DXFS. They don't refer to formats in the numFMTS element up here. The numFMTS element contains formatting for ordinary cells. So let's close that spreadsheet. And now let's make a little OpenXML SDK program to convert a spreadsheet with ordinary cells into a spreadsheet with a table. By doing this, we'll verify that we understand exactly the markup for creating a table in a spreadsheet. I'm going to go into Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new project. It's going to be a Windows project. I'm just going to make it a console application. I'm going to browse to public documents and name the project convert cells to table click OK and as usual we have to add some references go to the .NET tab add document format .open XML. in addition I need to add the Windows base assembly I'm going to add a few using statements Now I'm going to open the spreadsheet. I'm going to open it for read write because I am going to modify that spreadsheet. This test1.xlsx, if I open it, this is the spreadsheet without a table. This is the one that I'm going to convert to a spreadsheet with a table. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard and I'm going to paste it into bin debug so that this document is available to be opened by my console application. One more thing I want to show you. I want to open worksheet 1 so I can drop the workbook onto Visual Studio. I'm going to expand Excel. I want to open Worksheet 1 so I can expand Workbook, go to Worksheets slash Sheet 1, and I can see that the ID of this relationship is RID1. I'm going to need this information in a minute. Next, I'm going to open the worksheet part I open this by referencing the workbook part and then I call the method getPartById passing our ID1. This is the resource ID that I just looked up by examining that spreadsheet in Visual Studio. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to let the OpenXML SDK productivity tool generate most of the code that I need to convert those cells to a table. I'm going to drag test2.xlsx and drop it on the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. Come down to worksheet 1 and I'm going to reflect the code for sheet 1. Here I can see right at the very top of the file the code that I'm interested in. Here's some code to create the worksheet part and in there I can see the code to add a new part of the type table definition part and down below here I can see the code that creates the table definition part. You can take a look right here and you can see that the data format ID is set to 0U. This is the data format ID that refers to the DXFS elements in the styles part. I'm going to grab this code right here and I'm going to paste it into my program in Visual Studio. All of my methods in this class program are static methods so I'm going to just specify that this method is static and that this method is static. In my particular case I'm really not generating a new worksheet part so I can simply remove this call to generate part content and I'm going to rename this method. It's not going to be create worksheet part. It's going to be add table definition part. And now down here I can call add table definition part passing the worksheet part. This will create the new part and create the relationship between the worksheet part and the newly created table definition part. Next, I want to add those elements that we saw down at the bottom of the worksheet. Here you can see the code to create the table parts element with its child table part element. I'm going to grab that code. And down here you can see the code to add the table parts one element to the worksheet part. Let's grab that code. This is really the root element of the worksheet, so I have to change this code to say wspart.worksheet.append table parts1. Next, I need to update that DXFS element in the workbook styles part. So I'm going to get the workbook styles part. Now I'm going to find that DXFS element. Coming over here to the OpenXML SDK productivity tool, I'll go to the styles part. I can drop down here and here I can see that the name of the element is differential formats. So that DXFS element in OpenXML markup corresponds to the differential formats class in the strongly typed OpenXML SDK. So there I've written a bit of code to get that DXFS element. Just to write safe code I'm going to make sure that that code returned an element. Now popping back over here to the open XML SDK productivity tool, I can come up here and I can grab this code here. Place that in there. And finally, down here I can replace the child DXFS with the newly created differential formats one. And I'm going to copy and paste test one just so that I can repeat this experiment in case I did something wrong. I'm going to run my example. It runs and terminates and 
if I open test one, I can see now that my ordinary cells have been converted to a table. That's all I'm going to show in this screencast. Thanks for watching.